at Star Wars fans. Um, welcome to our coverage of the Texas Mini Worlds Top 16. Um, I am Justin Jack Tech. I'm joined by uh, Mike Turner, uh, Mr. Fahrenheit, MJ Turner. Um, Mike, I think you got to remove the, uh, the cover over your webcam. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have we'll have at least one of us on uh, on <laughs> visual on stream today because uh, I unfortunately don't my web my my household has one webcam and it's in use by other by the, my other roommates so I can't and I don't have my webcam but that's okay that's okay uh, and we're waiting now for uh, Matt Matt Lutz and I am such a failure the, the Lutz versus Woods top sixteen matchup is what we got here uh, and Mike was just asking me uh, what, what he thinks we're we're gonna see. Um, I was thinking that so the the low hanging fruit here, right? The the level zero would be that. Well, CRG is really good with hyperdrive, so hyperdrive seems like a potential like something you got to be ready for him to bring, um, which would yep. also suggest that Woods would be crazy to bring Watto. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> that, like that would that would be really next leveling to 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 pull the well. I he knows what like. He knows this, so I know this, so I know this kind of thing. Um, I I would not expect. Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> um, the cup in front of you, the cup in front of me, right? From ex Princess Bride. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. It had to be something along that level. Because um, I mean, I like I've 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 beaten Hyperdrive with Watto once, um, and and one and <laughs> one and o is where I'd like to leave that matchup because I don't think that that's something that mm -hmm. should happen most of the time. Um, like it, it certainly yeah, I think it certainly involved my opponent drawing like six battle destinies at the junkyard and having a total of two across all six of them because he couldn't kill <laughs> Watto. So he just drew characters yeah. and, and like sorry about the mess combos and stuff and, and so his text was reducing his all of his destinies. Um but yeah, short of something I like that. I feel like that's is, kind of the luck that you need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's kind of what's required. So I think uh in reality, I think um uh when Matt when when Matt and I were talking on the um on the the blanking on the name, the Hollow Theater show on Wednesday, um he uh he really liked the no idea list that they had. Um so that I think definitely seems possible. No idea is certainly an excellent deck in the metagame. Um and uh And so yeah, I think I think no idea no idea is a reasonable choice. Um, I think yeah, Matt's uh, and Matt did say he's going to be playing Dark Side tonight, um, which actually I think is um, is a pretty good choice and it is what what my thought was as to the best choice for match play at least like when we're thinking about it for the MPC, that if you play your Dark Side deck first, particularly if your Light Side deck is something like No Idea, um, so something where you can either play to ramp up the diff or play really carefully to avoid losing by a lot. Uh, playing your dark side first so that you know which of those you have to do is is uh, potentially a really good idea. Yeah, yeah, I agree, for sure. Um, Looks like Taco Bell's sound is still kind of loud. Yeah, we'll try to adjust that a bit. I'm going to reduce my desktop audio volume a little bit here too, just see if that makes a difference. Yeah, that, that might be a good idea. All right. Because uh, I try to turn myself down. Yeah, Kendall. Uh, court for Matt is also. This court for Matt. Is also a, a potentially potentially good one. Um, and I think a big, a big thing like, it w in the meta court is also an excellent deck for uh, differential purposes under the current situation, uh, and the current meta game. Sorry. Um, because TRM's so, I don't want to say down, but of the top three decks, TRM certainly seems to be the least popular. I would definitely agree with that. Um, sure. And although, uh, and although, um, no idea. My understanding is court is pretty even with no idea at this point. Um, it's uh, it's court from my experience has been pretty has been. Um, pretty advantaged against Legend, which is the other big three deck. Um, at least that's been, from, yeah. from from my experience of watching it, That's that's been that's been how I felt about it. Um, I mean, obviously the big strength of those three decks is that they're not really worse than 50, than, they're not much worse than 50%, 45% maybe against almost anything. So, 
All right, they are ready and uh, they've joined the game. So let's yep. jump into that and see what we got. Looks like we're in. All right, so. Uh, Sierra Eops, Dance. wow. Some sort of Eops deck. Versus Legend. All right. So I played against uh, uh, David's Legend actually in the main event for Texas Mini Worlds, and he was playing kind of an interesting version of it. It was very similar to uh, Ryan Saracen's build from Endor Grand Prix, where he ran a bunch of blasters, good blaster at your side, mm. uh, like Sabine and Stun Blaster, things like that. So yeah. I'm kind of wondering if this is the same version or if it's a little bit modified version of that. Yeah, that's uh, a starting effects might be indicative here. Yeah, that's similar, very similar to the build of Legend that I played at Endor as well. Um, okay, yep, yep. We were all big on that's the right. weapons, although Ryan and I had that independently, so it wasn't like a team thing. But so, yeah. um, so Matt, so CRG is starting the uh, operational as planned and pulling combat response oh. along with Moff Shergerad and Death Star 2 for a TTO start. For a TTO. And then, yeah, a good and blaster. it is going to be blasters, it looks like. And now, interestingly, um, interestingly, Norblight did not start Walkling in this build. Now, not starting Walkling is not necessarily like a disaster by itself, but um, not starting Walkling would suggest to me that he doesn't have uh, the anti-TTO effect. He doesn't have relatively unprotected. Because if he did, I would assume he would, would start Walkling to pull it. Um, and so, man, if that's if that's yep. the read that Matt had on this, this is uh, that's this is a good a good call potentially. Uh, Taco Bell saying in the yeah, chat that I was kind of wondering that Taco Bell. Yeah, yep. yeah. Taco Bell saying in the chat that uh, David has not played relatively unprotected in any of his decks that are published or in any replays that we have. Uh, against him, so. But I do think Justin follows up with a good point there. All Stars saying good blaster at your side is is pretty good versus that TTO. Those pings on the ground, you know, he can yep. spread potentially pretty wide. Yeah, so. definitely true. interesting to see see the damage rates we get here. <laughs> yeah, haven't se haven't seen uh, TTO think, in a very long time. So. <laughs> you think we might see a uh, Falcon try and fly in there and blow it up? <laughs> oh, that's possible. Um. That double movement, I don't think it's out of the question. Maybe not necessarily the ideal game plan, but... Yeah, it's really going to be a question of how um, how David's uh, hand lets him set up here. Because... Um, yeah, for sure. The tra like, the traditional putting Poe and Han on... Or putting Ho and, P po and Solo out on the uh, Falcon is not, you know, not the greatest to try to blow up the Death Star. Yeah, um, yeah, you're right. That is true. Uh, do we think he even runs a Falcon in the Blaster version? Very possible. Um, the space package in Legend is pretty versatile. It's pretty open, so you could do a lot of different things. All right. Uh, so here's you getting a pretty Perfect standard piece. opening. Found his Endor shield, getting Pia and Ozel. Uh, he did get the additional grabber. There's something special planned for them. So you think this will probably be a Star Destroyers or yeah, combat yeah, with, response solely a bit. Yeah, with combat with combat <laughs> response, it seemed pretty likely. Um, yeah. Yeah, Kendall's a good point. Since he well, well, okay. So Kendall suggested since he didn't start Jakku, the Falcon seems unlikely. The only thing I would say about that is not starting Jakku can be a hedge against against TTO because you can force TTO to have to find their battleground site yeah. or their battleground system rather um, by not giving them one of your own. So. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so we got Ozil and Boba Fett going to Slave 1. Uh, so, CRG is not, um, is not, going, not dropping Mach Treasure on turn 1. Um, which is pretty reasonable. Legend usually does need a turn to set up. So, so getting everything set up immediately is not the greatest thing to do. Or not necessary, I suppose not necessary, I should say. Yeah, I do think pings could get could get out of hand pretty easily. You know, if, if BB-8 hits the table, we get a couple guns out. I think he probably started that site because he can pull his other battleground to be able to spread to multiple battlegrounds quickly. Mm -hmm. 
I think it might be might be tough with all those pings. We'll see though. Yeah, it's going to also depend a lot on what uh, CRG's ground plan is. Um, <laughs> Cause I, I yeah, because thought... TTO can be pretty versatile with its ground, you know, and what it runs. Um, you know, with I've seen builds run Dark Jedi, I've seen Stormtrooper Garrisons. I mean, it's, yeah, the older school you know, plan kind of would... which way. undercover spies. Yeah, the older school plan would be yeah, like undercover spies to block drains, which isn't necessarily a great plan here because of the ping potential pings, um, or just like EPP Dark Jedi's and stuff. Uh, but I did see, um, I believe Dan uh, had a build of TTO that he ran at Endor that was uh, more capital ship based. Oh, thanks, Kendall. Um, I don't know how to change the name of that stream, so. Um, it might just have to stay what it is. If anyone in the chat can tell me how to change the name of the stream without uh, ending the stream, then I will be happy to do so. Otherwise, it'll stay called Just Testing, because I didn't think about that. Can you access your stream manager? Is that would be how you do it. <laughs> if you can't, it's not a huge deal, though. Well, I can certainly look for it since I'm not on camera. <laughs> Players just kind of getting set up here. It looks like <clears throat> General Lay is going back to the used pile to get, grab EPP Ray. Um, it does look like no reply went for his fourth pile pull turn one, um, which is not necessarily something you always see out of Legend, but there's a chance that um, with that EPP Ray pull, he knew what was in there and he knew what he wanted was in there. Let's set up that second site we were talking about and then pulls the non battleground for Mazi's castle. Aha. Through the power of crowdsourcing, I think it. I figured out how to change the title of the stream. <laughs> there you go. So, Joe, you just came in. Uh, predictions for who wins the match and why. Um, we didn't necessarily make uh, hard predictions. However, we did talk a little bit about ups and downs for both players. Um, it doesn't seem through past deck lists or published broadcasts that uh, no reply plays any re uh, relatively unprotected in his list. So unless he's made that ad, that would be a tough um, <clears throat> omission from his list. However, with those uh, good blaster pings, potential BB-8 pings, um, Rose Retrieval, things like that, um, those, that ground damage certainly could stack up for light side very quickly. Um, I do think that uh, SWCCGPC, I think that's probably Chris Kelly in chat, makes a good point that no reply is going to need to find a chance to flip. Um, and that could be problematic depending on what that ground package looks like for uh, dark side. You know, getting into a battle to be able to flip might be something that uh, light side struggles to do. Obviously, flipping is going to be something he wants to be able to get uh, that force pile reserve deck search at, or peak as well as um the drain bonus from the flip side of the objective so um yeah and it looks like uh, I, I think it'll be kind of a back and forth drain race here um until one player establishes a good bit of presence yeah wrong chris sorry chris <laughs> Matt is going to get the damage started right away with the paying for the drain of two at the end. I of the think system. Gogol. Yeah, I think Gogol, not worse. <laughs> it 
Yeah, for sure, Joe. Um, Legends. Uh, Legend usually runs uh, a relatively small amount of space compared to a deck like No Idea, but it's certainly very powerful, and Legend is quite adept at putting it all together to make it very effective. So, all right. So we do have. Monster yeah, and, and I mean, we talked a little bit about. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. I was just just noting that we have Jezerat on the table now, so we're going to start assembling the Death Star 2. Yep. What were you with that, that good blaster ping, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what his space will be. I would imagine at least a Tantive, probably a Falcon. Um, but like you said, it will be a smaller, smaller, more potent space package that is probably going to look at holding or attacking one system, not really spreading too. Yeah, gold leader and gold one mm -hmm. is, I don't want to say mandatory, but certainly very, very common, I'd say, out of Legend. Oh, yeah. yep. Just because the interaction with the seventh side of the might. objective. Um, and then uh, profundity is not uncommon, uh, just because it's the, I think, I want to say it's the best ship that's, or the best, most affordable package to put mm -hmm. uh, Holdo on, um, if, you, if you are running that particular setup. And then, yeah, I'd say Tan yeah, Tandem exactly. or, Tandem or Falcon are both pretty likely. Maybe not both, but one yeah, or the other. It's just a matter of, of whether or not he's running that setup, I think. Because, you know, you start adding cards like um, Amidala's Blaster, for instance, into your deck, and you you have to cut something, you know. Yeah. I would imagine that probably some of the space went for those types of cards. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd say the most compact space package that, that I'd say is likely would either be just a single, prof just like single profundity, single gold leader, and then Poe and the other versatile pilots uh, or maybe it'd be a tantive and a fly casual and a gold leader okay yeah. um, I want to say I haven't seen a legend that doesn't have gold leader and gold one so yeah he, he, that was definitely a no mission on my part yeah but on the other hand running just gold leader and gold one would be ambitious <laughs> <laughs> Here, Kanos goes from hand to the good blaster ping. No, I guess not, Joe. I mean, Legend has Le Legend has so many different configurations of lists, so um, I'm certainly open to being wrong about the the potential space inclusions. In my defense, Gogan, I'm pretty sure Desai did have Gold Leader and Gold One when we watched him in the main event of Texas Mini Worlds, I think. Take advantage okay. of CRG's small hand and drain here. Uh, I don't know that I would, uh, just because he has. I mean, he can't top deck. Good point. Um, I don't know. I don't know that I would, just because he only has. Ten active now, right? Like he's going to opt to not drain and just go for the loop setup instead. Yeah. What are we going to? Push out a couple of cards, draw up a little bit, replenish that hand, maybe see if he can find a ship. Yeah, you, know, you think his force pile pull was turn one? I almost wonder if it was just the gun to go with Han to set up the immediate the damage. Yeah. yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah, either either solo or, or or gun would be my guess, given what he played on turn one. He didn't go for solo, we know, because he pulled Ray with the uh, brief resistance. Yeah, he didn't. So yeah. it might have been solo, I guess. Yeah, so one of those cards was in his opening hand, and then he force pile pulled for the other because it was in his force pile. Yeah, I was gonna say, Justin, I, I could have sworn yeah. I saw it when you when you were playing your game, so 
Rose Retrieval set up here. Yeah. Cards in hand, I think that is a safe play for sure. You know, trying trying to spread a little bit wider, getting those two battleground set up so you can get the retrieval online, things like that. I think it's that's solid. Yeah. And you can be reasonably sure that you're either of your character packages are pretty safe here since you do have the flip available um, on top of force projection and whatever other tricks you have in hand. Yeah, I mean, the ray with lightsaber, um, I would I would assume is mostly there to satisfy Coward for this turn. and. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just to get the retrieval gone. Uh, so we lost Captain Harrison Dilla from reserve and under attack from hand. Yeah, I wonder if almost deploying the ray um, is trying to. Bo is, is both trying to satisfy the coward. Certainly, certainly, it's trying to satisfy coward this turn. Um, but deploying it over there also potentially tries to bait Matt into doing something to clear it. Because because uh, that would allow uh, that would allow him to deploy non EPP ray later in space. Yeah, that's true. If he's running the the split of them, which. I, think is fairly common. Um, certainly if he's not running the split, then yeah, he should just, just play right with lightsaber and get her out there. And... <laughs> yeah, to be honest... He's going to get a full hand here. Yeah. <clears throat> Ming's saying the, that this looks like it's the all-ground version of his legend based on the deck list that he's playing. Oh man, we're just all kinds of wrong. The only ship in that list, Meng says, is usually called Leader Gold One. Well, that's why I'm commentating and not playing in the top 16, I guess. So. It's exactly how I feel. It took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> now, of course, if this is in fact an all or even a mostly ground legend, uh, then uh, the comment that uh, Goglin made earlier that... Uh, that Legend's going to have a hard time actually flipping is probably even more uh, even more true. Yeah, I agree. I can't, yeah. I agree, Joe. I think is playing super cautiously here. Just loading up at that system, making sure he's, there's nothing that he can get beat down with or anything like that, and build that Death Star up and then move over probably. Yeah, Joe, he certainly wasn't setting up for a quick TTO. Um, yeah, definitely not. With with no moth turn one, it's hard to hard yeah. to get much faster than that, I feel like. Yep. Uh, so Matt just loses a, loses a master move from hand for the good blaster ping. Interesting that he didn't play it first. And then... Loses a point man from hand for the drain of one. David stops Chewy for Poe with a brave resistance. Justin, 12 sectors, 8 overload. Just go. <laughs> uh, that, that would be a way to set up your TTO faster. Uh, <laughs> I mean, or just, just be luckier and have more sectors in your opening hand. 
that's also, I guess, another Yeah, positive. that's that's the best way to flip faster, right? I guess set up the Death Star faster. <laughs> he did say we shall redouble our efforts. I mean, you're not trying if you're not if you're not having a better upper <laughs> hand. Exactly. Yeah, that's true, and the multiple sectors would give you redundant things to lose with blaster ping. This just seems like a mistake now on CRG's deck build, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, so it does look like uh, No Reply basically just paid for some damage and drew some cards. He did play Seer Round Kid to put back something with a huge destiny to search his force pile. We don't yep. actually know what it was, but I'm assuming. Mandalorian Mishap which I would presume is going to pick up Leia's blaster rifle since the no uh, since the under attack is in use pile and also is not really probably good here. I can see him grabbing the stun blaster too. I'm pretty sure this is the same list he played against me in the main event. Mm. It's very similar. Uh, Mandalorian mishap is I think really a um, underrated card. Uh, not by CRG. Especially right now. It was, with CCT on their eyes, I think it's, yeah. Yeah, since CRG, uh, since CRG yeah. grabs it, uh, he certainly respects the card. All right, well, apparently we're, we're uh, group thinking what the next bad deck breakdown TTO deck is going to be in the chat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we do. We... We had Kendall in here for a minute. I hope he's 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 the one that should be taking notes, making sure he gets these guys on here for this. <laughs> All right, so Shazerad gets the last Death Star Two sector. Um. I kind of assume that's the end of Shazerad's usefulness here. Because even if there is a super laser to be found, I don't really think that he is going to want it. Yeah, not necessarily. Yeah, Joe, that's true, but not a whole lot he can do about that, I guess, if he activated the... Uh, the, the there is a... Yeah, kind of a 50-50 shot at it. Doesn't look like he did, though. Looks like he's going to be able to get it operational this turn. And then everyone's going to move over to Kashyyyk, and then then the game begins on turn four. And CRG has the uh, we shall double our efforts effect to increase his damage. Yep. And since he got to see his deck, he is going to use combat response to get Baron Sunter to match uh, Baron Sunterfell. And Baron is going to go to Kashyyyk. Could actually be a reasonable spot to just leave uh, to just leave Slave One to Endor, move uh, move the Death Star to Kashyyyk, especially if um, especially if he has uh, the interceptor cannons. No, he's just going to group everybody at Kashyyyk. Yeah, I think he will, just because uh, I, you know he's got that Poe in hand. No reply does. I, I'd be a little bit cautious of of those two destinies with the Baron. Oh. Yeah. Losing the Baron there, while he does draw those two destinies himself with the Death Star 2 sector, um, losing the Baron would turn off your TTO damage. Yeah. Uh, I just don't think it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah, my other thought was if he had the cannons, he could split them up. Uh, it is true, yeah. Because then he can shoot down Gold Leader and Gold 1.
Uh, possibly a build that putting Baron to Endor might have been better. Um, just so that you do get to secure your TTO damage, but still split it up and be able to pay to do a lot of damage next turn. We'll see. So as far as the damage split here, uh, TTO is paying three to drain two and do three ping with TTO, so five damage. Whereas light side could be paying, could be paying six to do drains of one and one, ping one with the blaster and retrieve one. So not really that far off, actually. Light side's behind, but not that much. Yeah. Yeah, both of them off pretty slow starts, so. I do think uh, Gold Leader could go to Endor, satisfying battle plan. I think Yoshi's right about that, but he's got to be careful of that. Um, you know, CRG with a 12-card hand could find a mall, um, you know, he could find some notching, non-matching pair like a Saber 4 and Tarkin or something like that to go along with another tie. Or, yeah, I would certainly um, assume there's more I think CRG set up, set up pretty well for space. Yeah, definitely more ships, I would say. Um, I wonder if there's even... So traditionally, um, TTO with combat response would run a Vader shuttle with Vader. Um, but Vader's, yeah, custom, right. Vader's custom tie has been a little more in vogue lately. Um, TTO would traditionally, on my understanding, is run the shuttle so that you can put uh, the MOF on the shuttle. But um, mm -hmm. but I think it's possible that you could see custom tie here. And uh, Vader Vader and custom tie would be pretty potentially backbreaking if gold lead like gold leader and gold one with Poe to Endor. Uh, Yoshi's right. That would let him. That would let him flip. So, yeah, that is true. Hello, Chuck and Molly, at Kendall's request. I don't know who Chuck and Molly are, but presumably someone who's there with him. <laughs> he was saying he was just talking to his uh, father-in-law. So. Hmm. Alejo, it's been a long control phase, but he has like he has been doing things throughout the control phase. Uh, I haven't kept a close track yeah, on that. I, I think this is kind of a big turn too. Yeah, he just passed him to deploy. I, I think he's kind of trying to figure out what his course of action is going to be here because this turn could kind of dictate the course of the game. You know. Yeah. Man, I almost wonder. I almost wonder at some point if, uh, at some point if he would try to just suicide a ship in with Hujix in order to flip. That seems so bad, though. I that can't that can't be a good play. <laughs> like it's it, it's got to be better to try to satisfy battle plan and make him fight and, and make CRG fight him, right? That I think that has to be better. Yeah, probably. Um, although. This could be our. Uh, this could be uh, where Holdo comes in and Holdo and Profundity fight, and you don't even need the Hujix. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Looks <laughs> like we get a verify for a replies reserved, so he's kind of checking out what's in there, seeing if that can help him decide the the direction he wants to take here. I think. Generally, a backing up Ray at the docking bay. Probably a blaster here for her, right? Yeah. Since we saw that get pulled. The 
about a ton yet um, is TTO's tendency to put so many cards on the table. Uh, you know, just like comparison of Life Force right now, um, both players are even on Lost Pile counts, but uh, No Reply is already up by a decent margin in Life Force just because of the amount of cards on table. Um, you know, TTO is going to find some staying power and stabilize at a little bit lower fo life force, but that is something to keep an eye on just because of those constant blaster things like that. Yeah, one place I'm I'm not very familiar with uh, with the play of TTO because um, it hasn't been. I've only been playing for a couple of years, and it hasn't been a very it hasn't been a very common deck during those periods. But it does seem to me like a kind of deck that doesn't really have a lot of ways to stem the to to stem the bleeding too much or make up a lot of diff. So. It is True. something to consider. True. Well, yeah, Taco Bell. Yeah. See, that's that that that's the thing. You just just win all the games, and then your diff doesn't matter. Yeah, that's what happens when you go four and zero, I guess, right? <laughs> Whereas I went one and three and salvaged my my one win by winning by one in the last game. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I was at too. I got a lucky beat down with QMC. <laughs> I will say I've never won a game before by picking up General Grievous with uh, his his return from sight text. That was exciting. Oh wow! How about that? That is kind of fun. <laughs> so we see that TTO damage takes the solo from hand, see around kid, and EPP Obi. Yeah, no the huge loss there. Of Tuik Kishik. Let's see what he pulls from that. Perimeter stand and guts from reserve. Oh, God's certainly a sign that he was expecting some sort of scum deck. Uh, yep, for sure. CRG just checking out those last five cards. Look, yeah, that was the one notable thing that happened to me that weekend, other than losing on time in round one, so I'm going <laughs> to... Also, it's the first time I've ever used General Grievous' text on purpose, I think. Like every other time, I was like, oh no, I need to revert. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I was trying to steal a lightsaber. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so I think that image of the Dark Lord right there is kind of indicative of what CRG's ground package looks like. I think we're going to see undercover spies, mm -hmm. lots of mitigation, probably not a whole lot of fighting on the ground front. Yeah, agreed. And then we got a Tarkin's bounty to pick up something from Force Pile here. I do think, given the possible the possible game, uh, ground plans the TTO could have, uh, the undercover spies one I think has got to be one of the better ones against Legend. Yeah, yeah. Um, just because, as as uh, the PC channel, I assume Goglin said before in the chat, um, we're not setting up here to uh, to have Legend be able to flip. Uh, and if everything that Dark Side plays to the ground is like a U3PO or an Arca or something like that, where battles aren't going to happen, then uh... yeah, I I agree with both Joker King and Taco Bill. That that image probably should have gone to Solo's site because we'll likely see a spy come down to the other site. Oh, sorry about the mess. Uh, which could get canceled with imbalance combo, but then played again from Lost with Solo. Well, I think the bigger point is that Sol Solo's gun shoots during control. Uh, Solo's gun also shoots during control. Good yeah, point. So, so, yeah, I think for that reason, yes, image should have gone to Solo's site. A fair point that Solo, Solo and Rose can just move over to negate the to negate the image. So <laughs> I mean, Dan's right. We did see Dark Waters get played during the Texas Mini Worlds. So baiting him into, baiting him into moving outside so you can play Dark Waters is also a thing. Yeah, I think we're kind of making we're kind of making a little bit too much of it. Like Image might have been splitting slightly, hairs a little bit. Yeah. yeah, it might be slightly. It might be slightly, um, slightly suboptimal where it is, but it's. I think it's fine. I agree. 
Uh, so Vader and Admiral Piet are on the shuttle at Endor. So now we're setting up to do seven damage uh, of turn, although having to pay for all of it. Uh, meanwhile, light side is now representing pings of a ping of two, a drain of one, and a retrieval of one. So, still kind of a split of sort of four damage. I think you're right, Gogolin. I don't think TTO is going to mind to be paying to drain for big numbers like that. <clears throat> I think if you're playing TTO, you got to be prepared to be paying for damage most of the time. That's my expectation. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. A little bit slow out the gate. I, I have a feeling that's, uh, you know, cautious. Maybe a little bit of nerves for the top 16. I, I think both of these guys are a little bit newer to those uh, day two formats. So I think nerves could be a real thing here. And you saw quite a bit of conservative play from CRG. I think uh, I think no reply was kind of in the same boat of just holding back a little bit, not, not wanting to be too aggressive. Uh, I know I've certainly found myself in that position before. Um, Kendall, light could spread for ultimatum, but it doesn't matter because dark is not actually doing a drain of more than two. They're doing two drains of two and then three yeah, ping the damage. The TTO damage. Um, now that said, they may want to spread anyway, just to be able to uh, to be able to drain in more places. But yeah, the status of the ultimatum doesn't matter here. Yeah, and on the point of it being too slow out of the out of the gate, um, I mean, I think that's actually a, that's actually a, a potential reason that TTO was a really good pick, um, because uh, Legend is a Legend, from my experience, has been a deck that kind of has a hard time being especially fast. Um, ooh, uh, CRG lost a sniper from hand for his drain of one. That uh, certainly set, sheds some light on what his. Um, on what his ground plan would normally be. Uh, the interesting thing about Sniper is, can't you use it with Starship weapons as well? Uh, uh, it just says fire one of your weapons. Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, sure Sure, looks like you can yeah. fire a Starship weapon so I, or a I super think that laser. Yeah. <laughs> I think the idea is to fire some starship weapons during control phase. There. Yep. Yep. That's that's a fair so. point. Um, here I am used to uh, used to sorry about the mess. So. Oh, all right. <laughs> so we got gold leader in gold one, which I assume has to be coming with Poe in order to flip. Otherwise, this deploy is maybe not insane, but interesting. Oh, and the barrier, barrier. to that's rough. The barrier to stop the uh, yeah. suicide damage. Now, of course, um, that is still going to allow him to satisfy a uh, battle plan for a turn. So uh, it still accomplishes something. Um, but probably, uh, I mean, I think there's a good chance he gets battled. He might not be satisfying battle plan by the time that those drains come around. Well, yeah, that's fair. Because that's going to be a uh, big battle for Dark, I think. Yeah, I mean, at the same... T well, okay, so, and... Yeah, and Dark said we'll then have Force active to be able to draw through a goal later. Yeah, all right, all right. Oh, no, Dan, I'm not saying you shouldn't barrier. Um... I'm just trying to find the silver lining for... Uh... For no reply here to the to getting buried there. Uh, yeah, Dan, control set for control set for stun would be um, a disaster for for no reply. Um, 
one has to assume... And that is something that uh, TTO will run, just to bounce that pilot when they're in the sectors, you know? Yep. You will one, see that. One, <laughs> one has to assume that there is a rescue in the clouds, though. So Probably, yep. And they did fix the bug, I believe, so that uh, that will work. All right, CRG saves two destinies. You activated just enough, right? Cap at 15 just to save those two draws. force push though I would imagine the SFS is coming out here right yeah I would I would think so those, those cannons seem too good not to play right now if there is the legend redraw that is a factor and and the guns I guess don't go through in the first battle right uh, yeah because you can't fire in the the battle on the turn that you flip Yeah, if Set for Stun happens first, then he he won't be able to battle. It seems to me highly unlikely that Set for Stun would actually go through. Not impossible, I suppose, but Minx says Set for Stun's in Lost Pile. I would be surprised if he was only running one. Well, are we talking about Set for Stun or the SFS Tycan? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. The the gun. I see, the, I see the Joe's as confused yeah. as I am. <laughs> yeah, the, the laser cannons are in lust. Yes. Um, oh, and this is the gun. This I was actually I was just thinking is if Major Mianda and Scythe One would be the uh, the play to get around all of the battle tricks to get around the set for stun because uh, Mianda will just shoot during move phase. Yep, move phase shot. And. Uh, Gold Leader and Gold 1 is certainly one of the easier ships to hit with a Maneuver 3. So, mm -hmm. Especially considering your uh, pilot adds 2 to your total weapon destiny. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep, sure sure does. Uh, and he found the Imperial Decree, so that reduces the ping damage further. Yeah, no, Justin, I, I, don't, I would be shocked if CRG initiated a battle here. I don't, I don't. Although he hasn't actually played the gun on the tie yet, which would be the only real reason I could see playing the tie. I guess you could overpower, so maybe that's why you would play the tie otherwise. Nope, there it is. Yeah, I mean, Decide does have a good point, though, that, I mean, there's not even necessarily incentive, even if even if uh, CRG doesn't have any tricks, doesn't have the set for stun, doesn't have the tie and gun and all this, doesn't have any of that stuff, he probably just shouldn't battle anyway and just do his five damage. Um, make, Start uh, taking pot shots at that gold leader. Yeah. <laughs> getting a little bit of lag here so we might we might have the players dealing with the same thing here soon hmm. <laughs> yeah we could even land the shuttle at octo joe you're you're correct um and just fight Luke, because Luke can't flip. The, Luke can't flip the objective. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be a resistance character over there. Yeah, you're right. you're right. I agree, Kendall. That would be awesome. I kind of hope that happens. Yeah, they had to refresh. I mean, there are thirteen people in the watching this. Well, I guess. Uh, 
uh, ten spectators as well as the stream. So, as well as this, yeah. refreshes here myself yeah I haven't had to actually I haven't had to refresh the game itself uh, and I we don't get booty here there we go I'm seeing some movement yeah so it looks like our tie cannons gonna shoot here uh, needs to draw a two or more <clears throat> I suppose he knew that was the barrier, since that was the barrier he played last turn. Yep. What is that? Nope, not that one. Ah. goes gold leader yep. and, and so we're looking at a 18 to 16 force differential Norify has quite a few more cards in hand than CRG does um, but I think the the damage output from space is gonna get pretty oppressive here soon Yeah, seven damage to two, and then the retrieval of one from Rose. Well, the retrieval does mean that it's not completely over, because he's going to retrieve Gold Leader and Gold One. Um, but... Norfly is going to have to work quite hard to, <clears throat> to get that Gold Leader and Gold One back, get a pilot on it, do the whole flip thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, he's far, enough, he's far enough behind in the actual damage race at this point that um, trying to do all of that and then he won't even be caught up in the damage race because he'll still he'll be draining 2, 1, ping 1, retrieve 1. Yeah, and he's, he'll still be behind. Dan's login predictions. CRG wins by 9. I do think it's going to be a, probably a single-digit win, um, just because, like we talked about earlier, all those cards that the uh, Dark Side's putting on the table are going to add up. You know, while they're not necessarily going to cost him the game, it's going to cost a lot of differential. I do think. Um, old early prediction. Old early prediction for sure. <laughs> Yeah, go gonna I mean certainly going into going into game two needing uh needing to lose by less instead of just straight up needing to win. Certainly always good. Oh. Interrupt. We have handle to add to the drain. And it's going to grab that with the grab that. additional grabber. Yeah, Joker. Yes, Joker King, I believe deck lists were submitted before game one. Yeah. Uh, however, my understanding is also that they can change deck lists between rounds. 
Uh, so Matt will not necessarily have right. to, he will not have to play this TTO for for the next round. I'm puzzling out what uh, what no reply can do here. Yeah, I mean, spreading to try to be able to pay for more drain damage, just to reduce the diff. I think reducing the diff just kind of has to be the goal at this point. Yeah, I think that's probably where the, the strategy is shifted to. I was kind of surprised to see CRG lose a used interrupt from hand and then a card from force pile last turn. I think he's probably starting to think about the, uh, the diff game as well, but you know, there, there certainly could be things in his hand he doesn't want to get rid of. So. Yeah. I mean, I, in thinking about the way that this is likely to play out, I kind of wonder, I can't, and I can't remember the force pile situation to maybe that's the reason, but I can't, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if no reply was supposed to grab the barrier. Um, I suppose it possibly doesn't matter if there's no, if there's no other realistic way for him to get a spaceship out, but. Yeah, that's possible. Because I would say it's. Might have been like, waiting on like the. Uh... He might have been waiting on the short range fighters or something like that. But yeah. That might have been the right call. Definitely. I mean, it seems likely to me that uh, one of the cards that CRJ would be holding onto is barrier, so that he can shoot down another yeah. ship with the with the tie. But yeah, Dan, he uses once per game force pop pull on turn one. We were fairly confident it was for either Han or the gun. Yes. <clears throat> there goes the Sabine Wren. I kind of feel like barring uh, like a U3PO or something, which I guess probably would have been played already if it was going to be. I feel like CRG is probably done with his deploy phase for the rest of this game. Entirely possible, yeah. Yeah, an undercover spy or maybe like chat was saying, a Dark Waters or something wild like that. But okay. I don't think any more ship or, ships or guys, those systems are pretty well locked down. If he loses either of those systems, something's gone really wrong. It's going to activate everything, so no battles will take place. There goes a short range from hand. Well, that's a fair point, Yoshi. He could certainly have a U3PO in hand and has not had a particularly good place or reason to deploy it until now. Um, the imbalance combo to counter the rose retrieval. You're right, All Stars. Good point. We have not seen one single battle this game. 
Oh, was that a deck building challenge? I don't think that was the. Game I don't know if it was week. or not, but it certainly should have been. <laughs> hey, I, don't, I don't think it was one. I don't think it was this week's. So. Wasn't there a, a Johnny Chew deck not that long ago that didn't didn't force drain or battle but caused all of its damage through Sith Fury non V or something like that? <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. I think me that. I think I I, I certainly missed uh, if he peeled you three PO earlier. Oh, I did too. Running two is not insane though, so Alright. We're gonna pay for some more damage. Yeah, no reply rather wisely just peeling everything from hand at this point. Just want to keep as much f force cycling through active as possible, so that you can uh, you can keep paying for your damage. Yeah, I think Gogolin made a real good point earlier that like uh, since TTO doesn't have a whole lot of retrieval, each point of differential that he's grinding out here is probably going to stick and going to make game two that much easier for him. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> play from play from that much less of a deficit. Okay, so no reply plays Jedi Levitation loss to retrieve Poe into hand. Um, which doesn't make any difference in the differential aspect, but could maybe represent that he's found Goal Leader again. I guess it wouldn't be enough to battle, though. Sure, they're running out of turns to be able to actually do it. So, oh, I forgot what turn we're in. Uh, eight. No, I, I sorry, I forgot that we were on CRG's control phase. Oh, oh, <laughs> I got you. Uh, and he loses from use pile this time. Rescue, sorry about the mess, blast the door kit from use pile. Or no, blast the door kit's from hand. So we know um, no reply has Poe and an unknown, I think an unknown card in hand. Yeah. Great. CRT is going to draw some cards. I uh, believe the top, c the card in his reserve deck, I think, is the imbalance combo. Uh, it should be because he played it. So. La was that last control phase or this control phase? Uh, I believe it was during No Reply's m most recent control phase. So I suspect okay. he's drawing enough cards here to be able to protect that top card so that he can then draw it on his next turn to counter yeah. retrieval the following turn. Yep. So it's technically didn't need to do that because he could lose from force, but it's also fine. Lose control set for some from hand. I guess it's not probably going to do anything now, so. No, I don't think so. I mean, with all the drains only being one. Yeah. I mean, the only real use for it at this point would be to, to do the bounce trick. There's got to be another barrier here, right? Yeah, to bounce rows or something like that, yeah. The barrier, and that's why I think he was supposed to grab the. Uh, he was possibly supposed to grab the barrier the first time, was to prevent this exact thing from happening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, he grabs it now, but yeah, plays the Poe. But then this is going to be Poe, and 
no Hoojix is going to be tough. Well, there's not going to be a battle. Because uh, uh, CRG is just going to move the tie over, shoot, and I move suppose. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Uh, the tie can't move. It doesn't have hypergrip. Uh, combat a, response doesn't. A combat response, combat response doesn't give it hypergrip. I uh, know, but it lets it move. It lets it relocate, which is sufficient for this the purpose. Scythe, not, not the scythe ties. Oh, except scythe squadron ties. That is true. Okay. Uh, well, I guess then it is probably just going to be a huge battle. <laughs> Well, the trick with the yeah, battle, though, is... Again, I think we're down to kind of splitting hairs. Well... With a battle, CRG could exchange a character in hand with an interrupt and reserve, potentially, and get another diff. Yeah. I'm actually not even entirely confident that there's... Alright, let's see. So, CRG gets to draw one, two, three destinies here. Redraw one, that leaves four. Um, so, if CRG has access to another control tunnel vision, then it certainly would be over. Um, as is, let's see, Poe po draws two destinies, so that we could get you up to... I don't actually know that... I don't actually know that Overflow is especially likely here. Is as many battle destinies as Dark is going to get? You don't think so? Well, I mean, Poe po and Gold Leader. Sure. Poe po and Gold Leader cover uh, cover ten. Uh, he, he gets two destinies. He's going to force projection to reduce total. Yeah, you are right. Um, so it kind of depends. I mean, it depends on what these four cards even are. Um, oh, he's going to battle. <laughs> We're going to find out if it's worth it or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think the battle should definitely happen. Um, because there's certainly there's certainly no way that Lightside gets to survive this battle while still having a, a space presence in uh, a space presence right. at all. Uh, I forgot about the, the TTO um, draw. No, that's correct. There are four draws. Um, command, command to limit to one. Okay. All right. So yeah, that's probably going to be overflow then. Seventeen. Say they're both fives. That gets you to twenty-seven. That's yeah, still probably not enough. Uh, so should all be decent draws from dark, right? Maybe. I mean, there was a two. There's the super laser. Yeah, that's a good point. Won't be able to draw all of his destinies. Cold leaders can prevent that. Yep, and then we we'll redraw this last one so they can't draw it. So he's not actually going to crack immunity and it's only going to get to 20. That's not going to be any overflow. Oh, you're right. Oh, I'm sorry, it does crack immunity. Or, no, probably, well, actually, I guess will because he missed his opportunity to play force projection. I wonder if uh, Dan just realized that he, in fact, missed his opportunity to play Force Projection. Yeah, it seems possible there. Um, oh man, is it worth it to 
Just peel to? I actually think he's supposed to peel to. No? Okay. I guess I'm wrong. Be able to drain? Well, because if, if he peels to, he gets to do free drains for a turn. Um, and then yeah. probably just battle yeah. and concede to overflow, but he at least reduces the diff some. Yeah. Great. Yeah, Justin, my computer setup is in the living room, and my roommates are playing uh, Tabletop Simulator. I think they're playing Gloomhaven tonight. No, we're playing Arkham Horror. They're playing Arkham Horror, my mistake. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that... Uh, um, Forfeiting the gold leader instead of peeling to uh, could be chalked up to an experience at diff, what someone was mentioning before. That's possible, yeah. Can we get bonus coverage of the Arkham Harget? No, because they're in the <laughs> middle of a campaign and uh, they're in like game 15 or something. I have no idea what's going on over there, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yes. Here's a good point. Don't concede. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it it probably doesn't matter a whole lot because it's all going to end on the control phase. But yeah. Um. Does he have a shift to retrieve? That is a good question, Chris. I don't think. I don't think CRG's lost a ship. I don't think so either, because we saw him draw black two for destiny. Um, yeah, I don't. I haven't seen a ship go lost that I remember. I, I don't know what I don't know what the other ship would be. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember seeing one go lost. All right, so yeah, that is a win by 11. So, Dan, you lost on your prediction. Um, win by 11 for CRG for game one here. Uh, I don't think their plan was to play game two right now. Uh, I don't think so either. I think I saw a CRG post in Slack chat that it was just game one tonight. Yeah. So, we will see uh, when they schedule game two for. Um, I know there are going to be several games played tomorrow. Uh, let me pull it up and see what we're looking at for those. Um, let's see. Looks like we have the Smith versus Shaw match at 5 p.m. Eastern, and then Kipple versus Chen at 1.30. Um, and I believe we definitely have, we certainly have should have streaming coverage for both of those, so keep an eye out on the, uh, on all the various social media platforms yes. for announcement for all that. If I'm not mistaken, I think Jeremy DePaulo said he was going to try and be on tomorrow to stream. If one, if not both of those games. Yes, so, that sounds that um, sounds we'll, right. We'll definitely you. have some good coverage. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. We can get some more good games in the top sixteen here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, and uh, I, I did remember to click my option to save the stream, so it will be up on YouTube. Uh, I believe on the um, PC channel at some point here. Um, but thanks everyone for joining tonight, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all tomorrow for more coverage from our Texas Mini Worlds Top 16. Uh, awesome. Um, all right. Thanks a lot, guys.